Yeah. All right, we're back at ESPN First Take. Uh, it's turned into an issue show, but one I think, uh, if I'm reading properly on Twitter, that you are enjoying. We had a full debate list plan, but sometimes the best laid plans. This is I think got to get is, at people what they want. Yeah, this has definitely been better. Jalen Rose, Skip Bayless, Chris Carter has joined us on the phone. Stephen A. Smith is in Chicago. Stephen, A., I want to start with you because you were antsy to jump in when Chris Carter brought up the point. What is the media doing for the public? What what what's what are your thoughts on that? Well, 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 well first of all, we you know uh, I've known Chris Carter for years. We're very tight, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with him. But I think it's important as we sit here this morning to really dissect his words along with that of Jalen. Jalen's absolutely right when he talks about the name calling. No argument here. But I don't owe the athletes anything. My audience is the viewing public, the listening public. And that's and vice readership. versa, too. Because obviously I write for dot com as well. Okay? So what I'm saying is, is that if the obligation, you have to remember that, and I, and I don't mean this in any kind of disrespectful way. I need to preface my comment by saying this. Uh-oh, probably you shouldn't say it, then. Can, probably shouldn't say it. If you ask, no, I'm just, because, just, just hear what I'm saying. <laughs> if you ask the viewing public who they trust, they would trust us before they trust an athlete, not because an athlete is not trustworthy, but because as a member of that institution, you may be guarded and a bit protective about your former contemporaries and colleagues. The journalists, even though we too, as a responsibility, having the license and the responsibility to try to ingratiate ourselves with those that we cover, our ultimate responsibility is to our public. So Jalen telling you that he wants to come on ESPN because he wants to be different than what he surmises we may be, may be admirable, may be completely respectable and respectful in that regard. But that's you coming from that very place that we're talking about. Now the relevancy to that is this. We might sit there and, okay, you can get online for free or it might cost you $4. Dollars. Or you might get your cable bill. Or you know, you, you can listen to the radio for free, but you might have to have a car on your radio. Or you might pay 75 cents for a newspaper. You're charging dudes 75, 100, 200, 250, 500 dollars for a ticket to a game. They're looking at you. You play like garbage. They don't understand why. They're looking for us to maybe tell them that and to give them some insight to that. So if I sit there, listening and taking into account what somebody like Chris Carter says. And I'm saying, okay, I do have a responsibility to my public. We don't want to be malicious. We don't right. want to be vicious. We don't want to be insensitive. But at the same time, we have an obligation to give you something as close to the truth as we can muster to explain your performance, good or bad. That's our obligation. Yeah. And we're not doing a disservice to the public. By doing that. Everybody with a, a tongue, a TV, or a phone is a reporter, regardless that they get paid for it or not. No, they're a commentator. Not true. What, not what, true. What, 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 has not true. what has happened in sports, it has grown from just being print media, where that person reported what they saw and then they went home. Now with the 24-hour media cycle, the blogosphere, multiple shows that highlight people in the media, that didn't happen in the early 90s no. where there were shows that made media members famous. So now, how in the media do I distinguish myself from the next guy? And what players see and what a lot of fans see is somebody that has to go the extra mile, talk a little louder, mm -hmm. be a little more adverse so that they can be different and stand out from the next guy that's just a buttoned up reporter or a buttoned up journalist. Right, right. Now, my criticism, I'm not worried about the media or the outlets or just because someone has a microphone and their platform is, is, is about the size of a school science book. I'm talking about the platforms that we have. I mean, we have tremendous platforms, and I know we spend a great deal of time on our material and what we're going to say. I feel obligated to the fan. Like when I walk out in the public, I hope the fan feels like I provided them more information and insight on what's going on. They don't necessarily have to, to, to like me. Now, I'm a little bit different than you guys. I feel obligated 
to the players in the National Football League, the ones who played before me and the ones who have played after me, that I can have some relevance of truth because as players, you know the game is different. So I try to have – now, they're not my number one target audience of who I'm trying to please, but when I'm out in the football public, I hope that they look at me and say, you know, Chris, you might have been harsh, but you were telling the truth. Chris, so for what me, about your situation with Randy Moss? Interesting – you're in an interesting spot there because clearly a former teammate and a friend, and he comes out and he calls you out for some things that you said about him. So, I mean, uh, how do you manage that? This is the way the Randy Moss situation went down. All right. Uh, probably two or three weeks after that, I see Randy Moss in the Bahamas. He calls my room. He said he wants to meet with me. All right. I meet with him. He tells me he has problems with it because he didn't think that I would put him on blast like that. I said, Randy, I made three promises to you. I, I promised you you'd be one of the best receivers when I was done with you. I promised you'd be one of the richest. And I promised you that, that you would be great as far as your fundamentals. I said, where did I fail you as far as my leadership? I said, now, but you need to explain to me what happened in New England. Because that display in New England, Minnesota, and Tennessee is not the Randy Moss that I know. I thought that kid was dead. And you, and, and you should be ashamed of it. What did he, he say? Said, Chris, he said, Chris, you know something? You right. I didn't like the way you said it, but it is the truth. Now, me and Moss is just like Stephen A. and, and Iverson. We cool now. The athletes respect when you tell them the truth and you confront them. They can respect that. Uh, can, I, can I chime in? I, Jalen Rose, I want to get back to something that Jalen Rose said before Chris just spoke. And I need to ask you the question. It's a rhetorical question because I'm going to follow up. Do you have any, any idea how incredibly disrespectful you just were when you brought up journalism as if you know, everybody could be a journalist or whatever the case may be. I know Jaylen, it's do you not realize, easy. You know, in it's New not York easy City, being a journalist. let me finish. Of course let me it's finish. Not. If it was that easy, everybody finish. could do let it. Let me finish. Regardless of what somebody does Excuse for work me. today, it's, there's always somebody else that says that they Jaylen, can do your I, I, job better, Jaylen, cheaper. Can, can, be on can time. I make the point? So, can I make the point? I'm so not you can disrespecting the point? journalists. The great, that wasn't the great, accurate. A great gentleman by the name by the name of Gil Noble just passed away in New York. He was one of the first people to interview Muhammad Ali. Howard Cosell passed away many, many years ago. There are a plethora of journalists in this industry. There are stories that would have never been told if they, had, if they didn't have the courage to tell it. People like yourself, athletes before and after you, have prospered because of people putting their behinds on the line I work to in get the media some version I respect of the, the media truth and I, out. So I my point their is, job. so my point, my, my, my only point is, is that when you say stuff like that, it's like, okay, excuse me, it's about criticism or whatever. Well, that truth is what enables us to get to another level. It's what enables Howard us Cosell to hold the right to help people accountable. Build up the it's what enables us to get rid of, the, of, of, of celebrating the wrong was people. Healthy for the sport. He helped advance how the sport of boxing saying, was covered. I, he wasn't taking away from the I, sport. I feel you. You, don't, you, don't, you clearly don't want to hear the point, but that's all right. Go ahead. Well, we, I'm you done. know what, Stephen A., we, we're going to no, hit a break all right. because we're chasing one. We have to hit it's a okay. break. We'll continue the conversation when we come back. An issue-oriented ESPN first take. We hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. What's tricky is how our planned rundown fell apart, but it's been interesting. It's been fun debate, and I, I think – Reading the comments on Twitter, which, by the way, have been impossible to keep up with. Clearly, uh, you guys have been enjoying the conversation. A lot of them are leaning towards great discussion, hearing the media versus the athlete's perspective. But I'm seeing recently a lot of them are saying, this is a great discussion. Can we work towards a solution? Is there going to be common ground? I don't know that we'll ever see common ground. I don't know that we should see common ground. Not to say that the two should be natural enemies and combatants. But the continue, uh, we will continue to have this conversation. We have to squeeze in another break because we have gone long without getting it enough. We're going to do a quick break, and when we come back, we'll, we'll try to get a little solutions-oriented and find out is, is there common ground where we can all agree or are we just going to agree to disagree? Skip, skip laughs under his breath, and I'm kind of with you, but we'll see what we can do. More first take after this.
ESPN First Take is back. Issues oriented today, sort of the media perspective, the athlete perspective, and how it all comes together. Two segments to go. Here's what we're going to do in this segment. Skip brings up an interesting point. There are two different philosophies that reporters operate under. We're going to do that in this segment. And then in the last segment, we're going to get Chris and Jalen to really dive in sort of the media versus the athletes, closing <laughs> arguments, if you will. Skip. You bring up a great point in the break. Go ahead and, and bring Stephen A. in here and, and, and tell, tell us your premise, where you're going here. My friend Stephen A. Smith and I have often debated how we now choose different approaches in doing our jobs. And as Stephen A. well knows and often brings up, for 30 years in the newspaper business, I did my job the way Stephen A. still does his job. I went every day, every night to every game, every locker room. I stood behind everything I wrote. If you had an issue, I was in your locker room and maybe in your face or you were in mine. I had at least as many confrontations as anybody, anybody in our business has ever had, some of them near-death experiences. But then at some point, I decided as I joined the cold pizza staff and then we graduated into first take here, that I would stay right here because I do a studio show, as Stephen A. knows, 50 weeks a year here in Bristol, Connecticut. And I welcome any athlete to come in and, and if he has an issue or she has an issue, to take me on on live TV. And we've done that many, many times. My, my problem became, Stephen A., that as I did more and more interviews, I'm only human, I found myself getting too close to players to where if the player gave me interview access, I found myself sort of selling insurance to him that, that or he was he was buying insurance. I was buying insurance. We were making an insurance bond that I would protect him in my column writing. And I didn't like it. It made me uncomfortable. I wanted to be above the fray. So I choose to stay here. And my only fear for you is sometimes I fear that you're going to get too close to an athlete that you get an exclusive interview with. Because then when we want to debate that athlete on the show, maybe you're going to pull a punch because you want to maintain your access, your pipeline to said athlete. <clears throat> Approximately three, four years ago, I got a call. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, not a call. I saw her in person. And she came up to my face, and it was Shaquille O'Neal's mother. And she looked me dead in the face and she said to me, I have a problem with you. And I said, what is that? She said, you're too soft on my son. <laughs> what has happened to you? She said, you are as real as it gets. You tell it like you see it and it pertains to their profession. And don't change. Approximately five years ago in the city <coughs> of Houston, Texas, a lovely lady by the name of Leah Wilcox, who worked for the NBA, asked me to come and give a speech for the NBA Moms Convention. I got booed when they introduced me by the mothers <laughs> of the NBA players. By the time it was over, an hour later, I got a standing ovation. The fact of the matter is, is that it's my job to tell the truth to the listeners as I see it as it pertains to their professional careers. Personally, that's their story. And I like to ingratiate myself with a guy to let him know he can trust me to tell his story the way he wants it told. But how you perform, no mercy. I'm going to call it like I see it, and I don't give a damn how you feel about it. Period. And you do. Mm -hmm. And I applaud you for that. Well, remember, the reason... The well, we got, we, we got to do a break because we're really chasing the clock here. A break, more first take after this. Stephen A. Wilson. Words. I love well, this show because I'll, I'll I never have any All idea what that... might happen on this show. Stephen mm -hmm. A. All I got to say is that journalists are journalists. Reporters are reporters. Everybody needs to play their position. Outside of that, Jalen, nothing but love for you, baby. All love, man. I think as a journalist, it's not very important the relationships that we continue with the athletes, the relationship we continue with our networks, and are we telling the truth is the most important thing. I respect this craft. I'm glad we're having this debate. For anybody that says just because an athlete is getting paid or not getting paid, they can't get criticized, it's absurd. I'm going to do Sports Center right now to do it.